Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my uh, Saturday stream. We're having a real podcast episode today, isn't that right, Landon? We are, get in bitches, we're going shopping. And by oh shopping, my God. I mean we're talking about Mean Girls. <laughs> mean Girls 2024, 2024. Welcome in, um, Betrays. I saw that you gave me a follow while I was off and not streaming last week. Thank you so, so much. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, Love if you can movies. tell us how you you found us but yeah you're here for a very special episode we're talking about mean girls 2024 oh my god um so <laughs> before i actually show you guys uh the deck and we kind of get into it that way i just wanted to kind of preface this with making sure y'all understand that the original mean girls came out when i was like graduating high school entering college time so i watched it a whole bunch of times that year that it came out where i was like a senior in high school freshman in college um so yeah, uh, this movie is very near and dear to my heart. I knew every single one of these girls in high school and um, it was basically a documentary for me. So <laughs> so that's my history with Mean Girls. But, uh, but, but Landon, of course, as, uh, you know, as an elder millennial compared to a younger millennial, that was, uh, you know, you, you weren't really there. You weren't in high school yeah. during the Mean Girls. I was, slightly, I was slightly younger. I was probably in middle school when the movie came out itself. And it quickly, I mean, I think the thing about Mean Girls is that it spoke to the teenage girl experience, uh, that it has become a part of the classic teenage girl watch this like every uh -huh. like even now kids watch this movie and understand it it's like how uh 16 candles is and mm -hmm, breakfast mm -hmm. love uh is the classic of the 80s this is the classic of the early 2000s and people watch it and understand it and still vibe with it so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh 100% was like a few years behind, watched it on uh, VHS DVD, but totally, totally related to it. Uh, to some extent, I think we had a very different relationship between uh, like Karen and I with Regina, because I am still of the belief being like, who the, does this actually happen? And Karen's like, yes, yes, it does. We're going to get into that, uh, y'all. We're going to get into that. And then I that. watched this one and I was like, oh, I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Foreshadowing for later in the conversation. I saw you through YouTube, one of your Final Fantasy X-2 videos. Oh my God, really? That's amazing. Yeah, we're working. We're still working through our, our true 100% run of that game. Um, we're taking a little break because this is this is our Valentine's Day weekend. So um, so yeah, we're girl, girls and daddies, mean girls, and then we're going to do some um, some dream daddies. But we are going to go back to Final Fantasy X-2. Hello, Jane. How are you? Um, millennial myself, born in the 80s, same friend, 86. Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you guys this absolutely fucking beautiful um, deck that Landon made us. Here we go. Look I at think this. this is the hardest I've worked on a deck, and it was because Mean Girls deserves it, even if it's Mean Girls the musical movie. <gasps> Oh my gosh, uh, thank you so much, Jane. Thank you. Yes, matching ears. We we got the pink going on. Um, we do. We try our very best to spoil you guys. You all deserve it. Okay, you, you deserve, deserve it. it. <laughs> I'm new to the stream, Kendra. You are not new to the stream. What are you doing here? Or Bobby, I should say. Sorry. Uh, Bobby, you are not new to the stream. What is going on? Please. What is happening? <laughs> So yeah, Mean Girls the Musical, the movie musical based on the play, based on a movie. Yeah. So there are three versions of Mean Girls. If you do not know, there is the 2024 version that just came out, which was based on the Broadway musical version, um, which was based on the original 2004 movie. So there are there there is a Mean Girls trifecta. Okay. Uh, we have seen it's basically, all three. They're basically all 10 years apart. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. oh, come the early 20 teens. Mm -hmm. Mean Girls the Musical becomes mm -hmm. a thing. And now in 2024, here we are with Mean Girls the Musical the movie. Yes, <laughs> that's right. The music, the musical, the movie, the game. I cannot wait for the video game based oh off of God. Mean Girls the Musical the movie. <laughs> and that's just one of those ones that they're always trying to sell me that's on, uh, that's like pick your own adventure games, the role playing right? games that are on your phone. That's 100% Mean Girls. That's what I was 100%. imagining too. One of those like little, like, um, like a dating, a dating phone yeah. game, but it's not like really a dating, a dating game. Sim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Choose Aaron or Regina. Anyways. <laughs> uh, there's an obsy. Oh, God. The anyway. concept is born. You can, you don't have to pay me for that. Y'all can just make it. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh. All right. Anyway. We're going to, we're going to start this off the way we like to start off all of our podcast episodes, which is with favorite things, right, Landon? 
Yes, we are. Karen, out of this, uh, and again, I think that we should just preface this very quickly of being like, hey, we're talking about the movie musical, which means that there are spoilers, but <laughs> they're all the same thing. So, you know, if you do not, if you have not seen the movie musical and you're going to be upset about the fact that we're talking about things from the music music, the movie musical and spoilers, and as far as that goes, go watch it. I think it's on Peacock. Mm-hmm. Go watch it. Uh, come back. Um, but and then also we're specifically picking favorite things, not from the original, but from the, the new movie. Right. So yes. Karen, what is your favorite thing of this movie? Okay, so my favorite thing from Mean Girls 2024 was Karen. Okay, this girl, y'all. So they she knew, okay, she knows she is in a cheesy movie musical that has no right to exist, and she hams it up. Okay. I have yes. seen I have seen the original, okay? I have seen the original cast of Broadway. I have seen the slime tutorial version on YouTube, which has a different cast than the original cast I've seen. And I've seen this one. This is the best Karen, okay? I'm sorry. I love you, Amanda Seyfried. She's amazing, okay. beautiful, talented, uh, like stunning. This is the amazing. Best and and she holds a face, like a, a special place in our hearts, yeah. Amanda does, in the Landon Karen lore. But, uh, oh my God, so good. She was so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Best um, version of I Halloween, think... the Halloween song. Oh my God, her version is like so. It's it's so hyper and vapid at the yes. same time that I just like ah, just it's like oh, it's so good. I think the thing that I really really appreciated is uh, this Karen, while understanding that she knew that she was in a movie musical, she also wasn't the butt of a joke. She just made True. jokes. Yeah, and like I think that that subtle difference of being like, oh, the Amanda the Amanda version of Karen. The the joke was that she was so stupid. That was the joke. Mm-hmm. This one is just so stupid. Who are who's making jokes and doesn't realize that she's making jokes? Right. And that's yes, beautiful, wonderful. Which I do. I do think that that kind of that kind of flows through this version in a way that's more negative that we'll talk about. But that type of change affected this character in a very positive way that made the character even better so yes um karen is karen's favorite thing from (laughs) from mean girls 2024 oh my god i have to see this jane don't think too soon by the end of this you might have a different opinion but maybe if just for her performance i i think that there's some value there i think if you like mean girls it's an enjoyable it's an enjoyable movie it's fine Lunar, thank you so much. Eight <gasps> months. Oh my God, I love you. I love you. And the 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 least the least mean girl, the least the least oh. mean girl I have ever met. Lunar, right here, you guys. If you're not following Club Moon, what is wrong with you? Um, truly, let do, let's do it. Let's do a quick shout out for Club Moon. Truly brilliant, she is. Yes. Club Moon. There we go. She plays Wolf Quest, which is basically The Sims but wolves. So if you like simulation <laughs> games or you like wolves, you definitely need to follow Club Moon right there. So, yeah. That's so fun. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> as I choke on my LaCroix, um, that was my favorite thing. So Landon, what was your favorite thing from the Mean Girls 2024? Okay. So <laughs> I can't choose Re- Regina George because we're going to talk about Regina George. <laughs> so I cheesed it a little bit. I talked about the lyric change uh, in this song, Meet the Plastics, mm-hmm. because A, it has everything I love about Regina George, B, everything I love about Renee Rapp, and C, uh, some fun tea that I didn't realize Karen didn't know. I didn't know. I, I learned this. this. Landon taught this to me, and now she's going to teach it all to you. So, this is some behind the scenes in uh, drama with uh, the Mean Girls musical. So if y'all don't so, know, Renee Rapp was in one of the productions of the musical. Like, she was Regina she, for a while before she the movie. Was- I believe she was the second or third Regina. She was very, very early on and ran it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was, she was 19. She was like fresh out. Uh, It was her big first role. Like she hadn't been on Broadway much. She truly was like a hit. They saw her and they saw Regina. And uh, so she came on and the thing about Renee Rapp is Renee Rapp is absolutely fucking gorgeous in 2020s body type, which means mm-hmm. that she got she got ass for days. She got them thick thighs. She's got some large ass bo- boobs and she is not 110 pounds. 
<laughs> Basically, uh, if you're the type of person that says the memes like I want her to step on me, you want yeah. Regina, this Regina George to step on you. She's gigantic, but like in a good way. She is what I truly believe Regina George would would look like in nowadays. Like this is the ideal body type mm -hmm. here here and now, but was not the ideal body type type when 2004 came around when heroin chic was still here and the super skinny Victoria uh, fashion show sort of body was in. Mm -hmm. So the original lyrics of Meet the Plastics has a line about uh, I'm 112 pounds or something like that. Uh, and the problem is, is that when Re when Renee Rapp was originally on Broadway, she would sing that song and it caused an uproar in the community because it is very, very clear that Renee Rapp is not 112 pounds. And critics, critics and not even fans, just party haters ripped her apart for this. Ripped her apart so much that the uh, costume designer of the entire show changed her wardrobe completely they went from uh just body suits and very skimpy short short skirts to having regina wear having renee wear shorts over everything having her wear pants making sure that she was less skin showing that she was basically covered up they completely like like uh can, like just made her more commercially appealing at that point quote unquote uh and renee who's in the throes of being 19 is playing this iconic role and is at the worst of her e eating disorder isn't even being talked to about all of this she has a huge she has lots of interviews where she talks about how she would just go into her fittings and all of a sudden her costumes would be completely different and no one of the costuming in the costuming department would look her in the eye no one would talk to her about this anything like that uh and so she ended up leaving mean girls because her eating disorder was so was like ruining her body and this image and the fans and everything like that so she ended up leaving she ended up getting help and when she was asked to come back for this role she basically said i'm not singing the line about 112 pounds and they heard her and instead of like even cutting out that part of the song they just changed the lyric. They updated the lyric. They heard what their lead actress was saying, realized how fucking toxic this whole thing was and was willing to change it. And not willing to like, because Hollywood does that thing where it's like, oh yeah, no, this is clearly a 112 pound woman uh, when it's clearly not a 112 pound woman, <laughs> right. uh, which, we, which we have definitely seen before. Uh, so I really, really... I'm like here for the win, here for Renee reclaiming this role, uh, for getting this final say, for becoming the Regina George and basically middle fingering every single producer and critic that told her that she was too fat to be Regina because mm -hmm. fuck you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she's not. She's gorgeous. No. She's, she's absolutely stunning. Gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, she is the Regina George. She's just not 2004 Regina George. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's, and she's not... not even 2014 Regina George. She's not even really the Broadway yeah. version. Like, But she is the ideal Regina George for 2024. Yeah. And when you... And like, that's the thing that's kind of fucked up about some of this and the, and the beauty standards that exist in this is like, okay, especially when you're asking Broadway dancers and Broadway singers who need to have really incredibly fit bodies to play these roles, to do these dance numbers, to do these, to do this role eight days a week and to sit there and be like, also, you have to be as skinny as a stick. You can't though. It's, you can't. You can't. I mean, <laughs> it, you, you can get, you can be a smaller dancer or singer, but you know, depending on your height and your frame, like you're never going to be skinny and have those muscles at the same time. It just isn't going to happen. Yep. So it's I was like, oh, OK, we'll take it. Go Renee Rapp. Huge Stan. Go the people who are listening to this. And uh, thank you for letting it evolve uh, in a positive way, because there are some evolutions yes. in this in this movie that uh, shot itself in the foot and made it worse <laughs> than it was. But this one was a good one. 
Yeah. Okay. So before we get too far into kind of our analysis of this movie, let's discuss what Mean Girls is. So if you have not seen the Broadway version, if you have not seen the 2024, if the last time you watched this movie was 2004, let us remind you what happens in Mean Girls. And the plot is basically the same through all three with some minor um, changes for the times, but the the outline is the same. So Landon's going to share that with us so you guys can remember what happens. So basically, we have 16-year-old Katie Heron, who lives in Kenya and has been homeschooled her entire life. Uh, She then is all of a sudden moved across the world to uh, attend North Shore High School. And she is an outsider, like any other outsider. Uh, She doesn't know how to act in high schools and very fortunate for her. Some... uh, you know, some art freaks take uh, pity on her and Janice and Damien become friends who introduce her to the life and style of being in high school. Uh, They warn her to avoid a clique called the Plastics, made up of Gretchen Wieners, Karen Shady, and Regina George, the Queen Bee. Uh, Regina George is overall mean girl, but sees something in Katie that she likes and invites her to sit with the plastics. Janice decides to take this opportunity to convince Katie to infiltrate the group because of some long lost beef between the two of them. While this is happening, Katie meets Aaron Samuels, a senior in her calculus class, and turns out he's actually Regina's ex-boyfriend, which makes him off limits. Katie goes to Regina's house uh, at the end of the day and the plastic uh, where she's introduced to Regina's mom and the plastics introduce her to the burn book. It is a scrapbook that the plastics used to fill with cruel content, making fun of students and staff at the school. Katie tells Janice and Damien about the burn book and they explain that Janice and Regina were once friends but had a falling out. Katie begins to intentionally fail math in order to get closer to Aaron, who invites her to his Halloween party. When Regina discovers that Katie has a crush on Aaron, in a fit of jealousy, uh, she flirts with Aaron before kissing him in front of Katie. And Katie realizes that Janice was right all along and that Regina is a bitch. So she agrees to try to ruin Regina George's reputation. Regina, uh, Katie tricks Regina into eating weight gain bars, uh, use her fit, use, replaces some of her skincare, as well as tries to target her friends to fall out of, uh, of the friend group. Uh, this includes the famous candy gram in which, uh, Gretchen Wieners does not receive one, but Glenn Coco receives three, uh, (laughs) uh, Gretchen, thinks that katie is regina's new best friend and reveals all of uh, regina's secrets including that she's cheating on aaron and when katie reveals this to aaron aaron is of course heartbroken uh this all peaks at the at a very embarrassing winter talent show uh performance of well some sort of santa claus song it's different (laughs) in in this movie than in the original which is truly the biggest tragedy ever uh (laughs) But the performance uh, leaves Regina's social status plummeting while Katie is becoming the new queen bee. Janice invites Katie to her art show, but Katie tells her that she can't go, that she has to go out of town with her mom. However, instead, Katie throws a light study hangout uh, that turns into a raging party where she gets drunk and uh, tries to flirt with Aaron before humiliating herself and informing him that she is failing math on close on purpose and utterly shows that she is the exact same as Regina George. Katie follows him out uh, as he storms out of the house, but sees that Janice is there and calls out Katie for being just as terrible, if not worse than Regina herself. Uh, Katie accuses Janice of being obsessed with her. And then the friendship is over. When Regina discovers that she was not invited to the party and that Katie lied about the calcine bars that it, and that it actually caused her to gain weight, she adds herself to the burn book, uh, drops it in the hallways, and creates chaos amongst all of the high school students. The staff try to calm the young girls down. However, not much progress goes there other than a uh, few fun moments, of, classic moments in the original movie, and they rather not so great moment in the in the current movie uh however janice speaks out speaks to the entire crew and they seem to all agree with her uh as regina 
and Katie leave the gym only for Regina to get run over by a bus. Katie realizes the damages that she has done, takes full responsibility for the book, leads her to be suspended, as well as uh, no longer allowed to go to the dance. Um, Miss Norbury, the math teacher, offers Katie a way to earn extra credit by joining the mathletes. Katie discovers that she's, well, knew that she was really good at math and finds success there, goes to the spring fling, where Katie reconciles with Janice and makes a wonderful speech about how we all should be queens at the end of the day. Uh, at the uh, at the end of the movie, they all go their own way, where K- and Katie and Aaron make up with a kiss. Oh, so that's the plot of basically all of them. I think the only thing that's slightly different is in the original. She's uh, she doesn't join the mathletes at the last minute. Really, she's always she's in the mathletes. It, yeah. She just. Yeah, she just um, blows them off until the last minute, even though she's always been in it. That that's, Otherwise, the plot's basically the same. Yes. So, dun, 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 basically. So that's mean girls. Yeah, that's Mean Girls right there. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a bit, quite a lot. But I want to talk about the most important part of this, mm-hmm. I think, which is that oh, i'm gonna go back and forth here for a second upon looking at this beautiful wonderful poster you would never in a million years guess that it was a movie musical no nope. that any of this was a musical because it was not marketed once as a musical nope, nope. there wasn't a sing- there wasn't a single movie trailer that had a song in it not a moment of dancing in the trailer. Uh, no poster except for one that had a little music note in the words indicated that it was a musical. Instead, everyone thought that this was just simply a remake. Yeah, but guess what? It's not. It's actually a movie version of the Broadway musical, but you would never, ever know looking at the marketing. It's a mystery. Um, literally the only reason I knew that that's what this was, um, is because my husband had found it out and told me and you, cause you can't tell, you can't tell from looking at the trailers or the posters. And this is not unusual for Hollywood. Like I can't be the only one who, who has noticed like that Hollywood freaking hates movie musicals. Okay. I've got some examples here on the board. You, you might agree or disagree with some of these examples. Um, but I think we're going to start with one that I know you agree with. Cats. Why? Well, it sucks. Hollywood. <laughs> no, I mean. It's and, and terrible. I'm not talking... It's terrible musical. Okay. No, but, okay. But, 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 but there's a reason Cats ran so long. There are certain things that are incredibly appealing about the original musical. But here's the thing. Hollywood could not understand why cats had an appeal and i'm not talking about the weird cgi cat bodies or costuming or whatever like i'm not even talking about that i'm talking about the fact that they changed it from being a musical review to having the cats sing their own songs because they had the they had to have the stars playing the named roles but in the play version of cats like the the stars usually aren't the ones singing their own songs for the most part it's other cats explaining why this this other cat is the best cat, right? That deserves to go to the the heaven or cat heaven or whatever. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, it's the cats is weird. Um, we're not here to talk about cats. I'm just here to say like they there there are these nuggets of like really beautiful things in cats, and the reason why it ran so long and Hollywood got rid of all of them, every single one, because they have no idea. They have no idea. Okay, so we can all agree the movie version of Cats is terrible, absolutely so, terrible. Abs- absolutely agree with that. I agree that the movie version of of Cats is terrible. However, I kind of disagree with the premise of Hollywood hating this movie because I think it didn't, given how many people were star-studded actors were casted in this movie. They set them up to fail, though. Oh, sure. Absolutely. But I think that was because Cats was going there's no there is not a world in which cats would be successful cats I would be success cats would they be could successful make a good on version broadway of cats. they could they could make a good version of cats they refuse to because they refuse to understand why musicals are interesting i'm i am i am biased i hate the musical cats i am so not a fan of it um but i am going to argue with the two others on here because greatest showman 
actually was a fucking hit both in box office as well as because it was not a musical from Broadway to the sh- to the yes. stage. It was a movie musical made for movies and Les Misérables started all of this. Yes, and was okay. incredibly successful because of the directorial choices and because it was the first of its kind. So let's talk about that, okay? So Greatest Showman, the reason why it is on here and the reason why it was so popular is because all of the singers in it do a really good job. But if you go back and watch it, the way that it's shot does not take advantage of the fact that it's a movie. It's shot as if it's being viewed on a stage. So... There is no place where they take advantage of the fact that this isn't a, just a musical on stage, and it is a movie musical. Now, luckily, it has um, Zendaya and Zac Efron and Michelle Williams, you know, there to, to save Grant. it. Right. Hugh Jackman. I mean, yeah, but he can't sing. Um, but uh, he can't. Like, listen to him. He's the weakest singer in that whole thing. Go back sure, and he's listen. The... Okay. He's the weakest in the whole thing. He is. Okay, it's kind of like how Lin Manuel Miranda is the weakest in Hamilton. Go back and watch it; you will see what I'm talking about. Les Misérables, I have personal beef with, because this started the trend of the actors singing and it, them using the live sound instead of a, a recording on the studio, right? And expecting the actors to keep up with the orchestra and expecting it to all be timed right. And I know that everyone loved that at the time because it was fresh and it was new, but go back and watch it. And there's all these weird timing things with with, when the actors are saying words versus actions that they're doing versus the um, what the uh, orchestra is doing. And it's very jumbled and it doesn't make any sense. And they should have just done the normal thing. Thank God Mean Girls at least doesn't do this trend. I think that trend is over, thank God. And they do studio recordings now. Okay, so everyone sounds decent when they're singing. <laughs> Instead of, like, you can hear the snot <laughs> in, um, oh gosh, what's her name? The the lady um, that everyone doesn't like and that she's in, she's in this movie. Um, oh, she's on the poster. Uh, I'm looking at her. I can't remember her name. Anyways, her. And how um, Yes, Anne Hathaway. And you can hear the snot while she's singing, and it's so gross. Okay, now this is actually where Amanda Seyfried shines. She's amazing and perfect in Les Mis, and she does nothing wrong. Um, but uh, but I can't say that about everybody in this. So Hollywood has an aversion to movie musicals. We even have a very I, recent example. Well, I, I think we should talk about some of the examples that truly are hated by Hollywood, because I, I do not think Greatest Showman and Les Miserables were hated by Hollywood. I think they're hated by you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like hated by Hollywood in the Heights. Like, oh think my about the God. Rob- Why- is- that one's actually good though. And Hollywood it is it. it is good, but Hollywood like that's the problem too that we're talking about is it's not just when a musical is bad. Some of these are successful, but Hollywood itself did not like it. Hollywood itself approved in the Heights because Lynn Manuel Miranda was so famous. It had no other backing other than Lynn Manuel Miranda. And it got and no he wasn't even either. in it. Tick tick boom. Tick, Tick, Boom was excellent. It was excellent, but it certainly was not backed by Hollywood and ended up being on Netflix because of it. Uh, Into the Woods. I have some issues with Into the Woods, but it's actually good. There's nothing like objectively wrong with it. Uh, The 2021 version of West Side Story, which literally, I mean, and you can blame Pandemic for that, but like literally got zero marketing, was literally supposed to be one of the the movies that came back to the theaters. And like, oh, and no one did was (laughs) and, and no one did. Yeah. 2022 Matilda. Oh, that one was so good. Sure, it was so good. No one fucking no marketing. saw it. No marketing. Uh, 2021 Ev- Dear Evan Hansen, one of the largest Broadway shows uh, of the of the early or the late 2010s. Nobody saw it in a movie theater. Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Um, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Bobby says, would have been way more interested in Wonka, Wonka if I had known it was a musical. Who was going to tell Wonka. me? Wonka. Who was going to yeah. tell me? Wonka. I, learned, okay, I had I'm no idea. Eight years old. Who was going to tell me? It's fantastic. It's actually really good. I saw it. Didn't know it was a musical until I no, was in there. I had there. no clue. I, now I have to uh, watch it, I guess. 2023's, this one just came out in December. The Colored Purple was not marketed as a musical. Excuse and me? is a full excuse ass me? fucking musical. Wait, excuse me? This was a musical? This was, yeah. this oh, was a remake. Out. This was a remake of the, the Broadway version. It is the Oprah 
It is the Oprah produced colored purple that came out in 2023 on Christmas Day, was in theaters for a month, was not marketed as a musical, is produced by Oprah, has some amazing actor actors in it. Who was going to tell me? Nobody was um, going to tell me. I learned today. From away ended mm-hmm. up getting a mover, mu- musical release. Yep. Uh, prom ended up getting a musical release, but none of these were. Prom marketed. wasn't very good, though. Sorry. It was, I mean, prom the prom the musical sucks too. Yeah. But well, I mean, I wasn't going to go that far because I haven't seen that. I have not seen the slime tutorial of prom, but I did watch the movie. It wasn't very good. But all of these were not. Most of these were not even marketed mm-hmm. as musicals, or mm-hmm. were produced as musicals were famous in the musical and had no marketing behind it at all yep and yet like so they are set up to fail from the very jump because they're refusing to market to a Mm -hmm. wider audience and like that's coming from people like from me who's like marketing like ads should be like musicals should be targeted at me I sad Broadway is some of my number one listen to stuff on Spotify. I no am shame a in that. There's no girly. shame. And no, no shame at all. But I'm like, if I'm not getting these ads and I'm not getting this information, who the fuck are they advertising to? I don't know. Good question. And what did we see during the Super Bowl? Another one of this oh, trend. Okay. I am so, so guess I'm- what? <laughs> Guess what? That Wicked trailer, it's the musical. Oh. It's not a straight remake. It is literally a movie version of the Broadway musical. And the only reason I thought it might be is because you hear the, the you know, from the her line that's like, defying gravity. I'm not Adina Menzel. I can't do it. But you imagine her doing it. And you hear the, ah, you know, from that. That's it. Yeah. That's the only clue. And I remember we were watching this well, at Super Bowl. And I turn to my husband and I go, Wait, is that the musical or is that the movie? And he and it's kind of shrugged. And we had to look it up. It's a musical. Like the only it's reason I knew it was a musical was because of the casting and because we had known that it was coming for a very long time. Very, very big wicked family, uh, like household fan, all that. So we had known that it was coming. There is nothing in its marketing telling you that it's a musical. I just want to you... hear a line from Loathing. If I heard a line from Loathing, I might be really hyped for this movie. Or but perfect. did I get anything like that? No, nothing. Nothing. Or per or perfect? That would have yep. been also another great one. Mm-hmm. Um and oh, and also I think I think we might have to do Wicked Karen because it's part one and part two, so we're gonna have to tear it apart. I also hate about that. I'm so mad that it's a part one and part two. It's literally like they hate musicals and they're gonna do the same thing they did to it with what that they would do with Dune, where the only people who are gonna enjoy this movie are people that are already big fans of the Broadway play. Just yes. like the only people that like the Dune movie are people that are already in the Dune fandom. I, I why, saw somebody who this? I personally think came up with a genius idea and they were like, the only way a part two, part one Wicked works is if you release them at the same time and you just have an intermission. And I'm like, you're right. I 100% would go spend all day at the movie theater, watch part one and part two at the same time with like a 30 minute intermission between. I have my money there. I would not hate that. I think there's a market for that, too, because you know what? We did that on our own with Barbenheimer not that yeah. long ago. That was back in July, you know, not even a whole year ago. Like, I don't know. This is just, they're just it's just dumb. It's it's dumb. Why? Excuse me. Why do they keep doing this? Like, they, 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 give, it, they give it no marketing. They they mess up really core things about what makes a movie musical good. They and and then and then they're surprised that um that uh you know these these fade from relevance like instantly after release. They keep doing it because I think that musicals are part of what keeps the industry alive. Uh, but they're determined to try to get them to fail. Because think about how how popular stuff is. When it is a musical, a musical episode of a TV show, hell, a musical TV show, uh, musicals in the past, Les Mis and Greatest Showman were amazing in the box office. They can make a shit ton of money for a relatively cheap price because you do not need the the CGIF. You don't need graphics. You don't need like the Marvel level stuff with a musical. You can do it pretty bare minimum yeah, if you wanted just to, decided if you did if it right. Yeah, but they've just decided, Hollywood's just decided if it's not going to be a four quadrant billion dollar release, then they don't care. And they so this care. genre is suffers. It's like it's it's going the way of the rom-com. It is. 
which is tragic because yeah. God would love a good musical would love for musicals to be more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. The problem is that they just made them poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Or they, they don't market so them at mistakes. all. And they then shit so like mistakes. the colored mm -hmm. and then shit like the colored purple gets it gets passed on. Yep. Yep. Because even when they don't make mistakes, they mess up the marketing. So why Hollywood hates musicals? Because they hate the gays. <laughs> Because they hate us. <laughs> oh my gosh, it sure, sure seems that way, doesn't it? But no, I'm, I'm. It's, it's really because they refuse to do anything anymore that's not like a four yeah. quadrant billion dollar release, and and these are not those. Just falls into this. I mean, think of, think of how Mean Girls was set up. Uh, mean Girls had a release date in January. January mm -hmm. is when movies go to die. Mm -hmm. uh, the costuming, the costuming uh, and other aspects of the actual movie was cheap. They had a low budget for this movie. I yeah, if, like, okay, low. so a after this, if you go see the movie, don't pay attention to the clothes. Just don't because no. the audiologies would be disappointed. You'd just be disappointed. They would so um, bad. <laughs> I think we did the math. I think we did the math, if I remember correctly, when we were planning this. Yes. And the original budget with inflation and the budget between oh, now for what the musical version got was not that different, considering yeah. that they needed to have more rehearsals, more studio space, more time, more dancing, more actors and extras. Yeah, so I'm Googling it right now. Yeah, I think we, we did. did I think we did do but I didn't write it down. Okay, so the original budget for Mean Girls was $18 million. The Mean Girls 2024 was $36 million. So let's do um, calculate inflation. All right, so here we go. Here's an inflation calculator. Oh, wait, that's not. Oh, my God, Google. This is the one I want. Okay, also, $36 so million for a movie is not that much these days. <laughs> like that's a that's a low budget unfortunately yeah i'm about to prove it i'm about to prove it okay so we've got uh let's see in yeah 2004 okay well it's not what are you doing 18 million oh it won't let me put in enough zeros on this one okay well anyways that's we'll stupid. calculate 18 Okay, and I'll just extrapolate. Yeah, so and so $18, $18 in 2004 is worth $30 in 2024. So basically, the Mean Girls of 2004 had in today's dollars a $30 million budget. Mean Girls and 2024 had a $36 million budget. So it's not that much higher budget than the original, and yet this is a musical version which should have a much higher budget. Much higher budget. I mean, think of, think of all the extra people that they have to yeah. hire. Think of all the extra, like, hands on sets, the extra shots, the extra days like that goes so quickly yeah because it's because um, it's actors it's more it's more actors you can't just hire an extra studio you have to have dancers as your extras so and then and then you also expensive. have to have recording days and mixers yes. and artists and all yeah. of that and plus the right i mean even though T tina fey owns it at least like mean girls was an original script mm-hmm she then had to like even even though Tina Fey is producing it and probably gave a deal, they still had to pay for the licenses of the use. They mm -hmm. still had to, the the budget still had to include buying the rights of it. Mm -hmm, so like, mm -hmm. which was worth a decent amount of money because it's Mean Girls yeah. musical, right? Okay, so, so let's talk about yeah. so like so like if if Hollywood hates movie musicals and they put it in January, which is the month that movies go to die, and and they didn't market it properly, why why the heck did they make it? Why? Why did they make this movie? Um, it's well, we very think... confusing. We have some. We have some thoughts. Um, <laughs> yeah. This okay. So we're just gonna we're just gonna whine for a minute. So um, yeah, so much whining. Uh, because like I, I don't understand. Maybe maybe Tina Fey needed a paycheck. Like this, we speculated this. I I, I think she needed to get that bag. I think we we did some deep dive research and realized that she hadn't really done anything since Thirty Watt Rock ended. Mm -hmm. not really uh she had hit some commercials i mean she's pretty she's a well-known face in the industry she a hundred percent but she didn't really have any writing credits behind her mm -hmm. she she didn't really have anything else and i truly think that she was like how the fuck do i make money in a in a, in a world that is only is only hyping up sequels 
-hmm. and is only willing to produce so much because there's a writer's there. I mean, there was at this point when she was trying to get it made, there was talks of a writer strike. There was talks of, of this. How do I, one did happen, you know? Yeah. One did happen, but I, I don't like there were, there were talks of it possibly happening when this was in production yes uh two or three years ago yeah, and yeah. so it was like how do i ensure that there is a bag here what can i do to make sure that this gets it, that it i does can make feel money like, in this it does feel like this this was made so that tina fey could feel relevant like it like really it really does because there's just no reason okay so there just wasn't. There are three versions of Mean Girls. Okay, I bet you can't guess which one we think is the worst version of Mean Girls. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you two guesses. The first one doesn't count, right? It's 2024's version. It's just. It just is. It's not good um, compared to the other versions. You know. Yeah. It's not bad. It's just not good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I. I don't. I'm. I will say when something is bad, and this just. It felt like okay. How do I make money? How do I stay relevant? How do I make yep. money? And frankly, I also think that there's something to be said that as much as I love Tina Fey, I think her humor is out. Like I yeah. think that I think that she has reached the age where she is no longer relatable to the market demographic that she wants to be relatable yes. to. Yeah. So and... Tina Tina Fey, if you if you knew her during Thirty Rock Days, if you've seen the original Mean Girls, it's pretty edgy, and some of it is straight up offensive to the modern ear. And I just think that Tina Fey doesn't know how to be funny to the modern sensibility. She just she isn't interested in learning how to do that and or maybe incapable. I don't know, obviously, well, but it just doesn't seem like she is. I, I think that she doesn't know how to tone back her own humor because mm -hmm. we see the humor be toned back. But it isn't it loses its funny. The yeah. edge you she takes too much out of the edginess. Yeah. She doesn't she doesn't understand the line. And I think the line is so niche that only someone who's raised in it can really truly understand. Yeah. And frankly, somebody who isn't a white woman mocking other people and other and other demographics is probably the way that's gonna be the most successful. Right. Um, is this where we wanted to talk about some of the cut choices or is that the next slide, Landon? I think that's some of the next slide. Okay, okay. So let's talk about okay, so we've 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 kind of set you guys up for this. Okay. We've sort of we've sort of told you we've told you the movie is bad. Why is the movie bad? Okay, first reason, the casting choices. Okay. Like, oh my God, they cast these people, I guess because they're hot on social media, but like, okay, let me just tell you. Well uh, some of them are so I bad. I think that's the other thing too, of like, hey, why was this made? This was made because there were deals with execs and talks with artists of wanting to ensure that some of the big stars and some of the big social media people who had hit it and who they mm -hmm. had signed would stay relevant. And what's easier to make sure that someone stays relevant? Well, let me put you in a low risk, low interest where you'll make money movie yep. that says that we're giving you this but we're going to see how successful you really are going to be in this transition it sure does seem like that because okay so if y'all remember from landon's um synopsis aaron is is the the uh, the boy the object that katie and regina are fighting over during the course of the movie in the original Aaron is this very genuine sort of guy. He's he's not like a dumb jock, but he's not very smart either. He's just his main trait is that he is very kind and understanding and forgiving, which is how he ends up in the situation where he's with Regina. Right. He's a hot he's a, a hot football player. So she goes after him and he's a very forgiving sort of kind person. So he he gives her all these chances, even though she's a bitch. Right. And um you can completely understand why Katie falls for him in the original because of these traits that he has. You can completely understand also why he's so angry when he realizes that his crush on Katie was fake because she was just Regina again and he storms out. Like, but in this movie, I don't know what this guy is doing, but he's not giving kind, genuine, forgiving. He's giving cardboard. And I don't know why the girls are going crazy over him. It's just, well, be just because he's pretty. Like, that's the only reason. Whereas that's not how it is in the original movie. I think that that plays into our last part, which is like this concept of 
I, I think that the modern day consumer, especially for the demographic of the of the teenager, has little to do with talent and everything to do with recon recognizability. Mm -hmm. I think I think our level of what is success and what is going to be popular is based off of uh, actor, like more so than ever, is going to be based off of the parasocial relationship that actors and influencers have with their fans rather than the talent that they show in the projects that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that is what's going to drive and has been driving and will continue to drive Hollywood. And that is what I think drove most of this movie. I think that the people who really liked this movie, the teenage, the teenagers who really, really liked this movie, liked this movie because they recognized the actor from Outer Banks and they made connections with Renee Rapp and her press tour. And there was a virality of, of certain other people in this show, in this, uh, in this movie that they connected to and had a outside idea of. And that mm -hmm. influenced whether they liked it or not. Yep. So, okay. So why why is Katie Ooh, pictured? Sorry. Whoa. Um, let's, yep, almost. So like, why is Katie pictured here? Um, I have to tell you because she is the worst part of this movie. Okay. So bad. So I don't understand. You look at Rotten Tomatoes and there's people praising. And, and, and Gourney Rice, I think is her name or, or something close yeah. to that. Um, praising her performance. We did not see the same movie. Like I, I went to the theater to see this movie, right? And I was texting Landon, like while I was seeing it, I'm like, I'm gonna live blog this to you. This is my notes. Okay, you get my notes live. And the entire time I'm like, why is Katie so boring? Why does she have no reactions? Why does she suck? Like it like just I, I just couldn't find there was very little of her performance that I thought had anything compared to the other Katie's I have seen. It just isn't good. It's wooden. It's boring. You will see a lot of takes on the internet that basically say that this movie is bad because the mean girls are not mean. They're nice. Wrong. I don't think that's right. Okay. Here's what I think. This, the reason why you think the girls are nice in this movie is because Katie does not react. She doesn't look hurt. She doesn't look angry the way that Lindsay Lohan did, the way that it comes across on the stage when this is a musical, she just she doesn't react. And so even we're going to talk about like the toothlessness of this movie later, but a big reason why you come away feeling like the girls are not mean is because Katie acts like they're not even when they're being mean. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. Sorry. Uh, her, yeah, she's she is she's bad. Mm -hmm. Uh I I think that this she is a she is she is a blank piece of paper and a wall in the movie that she is supposed to be a protagonist of it. And yeah. her she is not the protagonist of this movie. No. Like that is how bad her performance is. Yes. Um it is still it, it, and I don't know if that was, I don't know if that is her talent or if that is a choice that she made, but for whatever freaking reason, she's bad. It's bad. I, I there's heard, nothing likable about her. I saw a TikTok that was like, people hating on Katie. The reason why you, you're you hating on this version of Katie is misogyny. No, I'm, ha I'm hating because she's the weakest part of the movie and she's the protagonist what? and that should not be the case. What is misogynistic about disliking Girl, her? Like, it's a TikTok. So, of course, they don't fully explain their point. I, know. I have no I idea. Know. I don't I'm know. sitting there I'm like that, trying I'm to it. even follow the logic because I'm just like, no, she just sucks. Oh, she's uh, just boring. She's just boring. I think I, I think that she, yeah, they they cut her off at the at the knees. Yeah. And, and I, I think producing does, I think that does, and I then then I think the actor's choices do as well. Yeah. And I and I don't know if under a better director she would do better. I don't know if maybe like this just just being in a starring role was just too much for the level that she's at right now. I really don't know. I'm sure she's loved the girl. I'm sure she's she's done other things that are that are good, but it, but this is not one of them, right? Mm -mm. So it's, it's, uh, it's, she's the star she's the star and so, she's the worst part of the movie and, and i think like i think unfortunately she then had the uh I, I think what makes it even worse is that she is paired with some amazing talented giants mm -hmm. who are really good and mm -hmm. therefore make her look even worse and uh -huh, we'll get to that in a uh -huh, bit uh-huh Okay, so spoilers before, before we get to that. But before we get to that, there's actually one other thing we wanted to, to complain about. Can you believe they cut that? Oh, my God. Okay, so if you're going into this, like, like thinking that you're going to hear, like, your favorite lines from the original movie or your favorite songs from the Broadway, there's a lot of stuff that they cut that 
I was personally disappointed. And then Landon I, is disappointed in completely different things. So there's lots yes. to be disappointed about. And I think that there should be a preface before we dig into this. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said before, this movie was made, the original movie was made in 2004. Yes. Uh, it, that was the time of edgy comedy. Edgy mm -hmm. comedy that had to do with racism, edgy comedy that had to do with sexism, edgy comedy that no longer passes now, that Tina Fey is finding out do not pass now. I am not saying that every single joke should be kept in. Every There are a lot of jokes that should have been changed. Right. Uh, and like a lot maybe, of jokes maybe the, that Maybe the coach that goes after the, the students, maybe it's good that they cut that joke, yes. for example. <laughs> and and the several of those jokes were already previously cut uh, because it had been turned into a musical, mm -hmm. knowing that the audience and the demographic is different in a uh, in a musical. You have a slightly older uh, audience. You ha typically have a more liberal audience because mm -hmm. arts and all that fun stuff. Like there, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more awareness. You're not as broad as an audience in as you were in the 2004 movie in the 2014 yep. stage play. Uh, so a lot of those jokes were already cut, and then come ten years since 2014. When we hit 2024, knowing that there has been so much uh, social change that mm -hmm. things had to be cut even more. I recognize that. But we're not asking them to remove the teeth yeah. of what makes this movie great. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay, so here's the problem. Here's the problem. They cut so much of the edge that it's not funny anymore. There's like no jokes. There's no point where I laughed out loud. There's no point where I thought, wow, that's clever or that's interesting. Like it, that just doesn't happen in the 2024 version. It doesn't happen. It's toothless. I, it's completely toothless. So like one of the ones that I had said that I found was a change that I really disliked uh, was the fact that she from Africa no longer makes any sense because there's no payout to the jokes at all uh -huh. in the original there were several jokes about her being white but she's from africa and, and like the classic line of you can't just ask people why they're white uh the the classic line of tina fey's character mistaking uh her like mistaking the black girl for a girl who was from africa like those still things funny that, sorry that second one's still, still funny. funny like i and that, still funny but the thing that would have made that funnier Mm -hmm. And the thing that would have made it hit for audiences now is that the person being the butt of the joke, not being the black girl, but being the teacher yeah. who couldn't fucking recognize her own and, student oh and God. realize her own ignorance. It would be like, so that easy. Is, oh my God, and it would be so is, easy. You would just cut to the is, classroom and the student's yeah. like giving the teacher the stink eye. Like, what Done. the fuck? Uh, that's the Gen Z, Gen Alpha humor. Uh, is recognizing that the person who is doing the racist is mm -hmm. the bad, is the mm -hmm. butt of the joke, is the thing that is cringe, not the person who is who is uh, of the demographic that you are right? making fun of. So you can make like, the same joke. You can absolutely make the same joke, and then it just be like the entire class, like, "What the fuck is wrong with her?" Or like right? being like not being able to, or like even like having the subtle difference of like not being like a student not being able to tell the two white teachers apart, like because they look the same. That should uh, be funny. <laughs> <laughs> you could a hundred percent have like those jokes mm -hmm. um, that are culturally aware and are recognizable and would have hit with an audience mm -hmm. rather than just being like, oh, we don't want to talk about race at all. So we're going to pull out all the racism jokes and all the jokes that might have, and not even racism jokes, jokes that might have to do with, with students of color being black. And then all of a sudden Katie from Africa doesn't make any fucking sense. Like it would have been funnier if they changed it, that she would grew up in a cult. That yeah. she like that was why she didn't go to school. She grew up in a cult, and then all of a sudden, like she escaped a cult, and now, and, and that would even make even more sense because of course she's gonna follow Regina George, who is like basically a cult leader. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> there's a, and there's a couple of other things with the the Africa bit that kind of bother me in this version, right? So when it comes to her being from Africa and then going into high school, the parallel both in the the original movie and in the Broadway play is that high school is as vicious as the jungle. That's what you're supposed to get out of it. That's the motif. Um, because in addition to the Africa jokes, like in the original movie, there's the scene where everyone's going crazy over the the burn book and they're like it's literally got like animal african animal sounds and jungle sounds yep. behind it right in the broadway version every time um gretchen breaks a little bit every time gretchen gets a little weaker and more towards katie's side and away from regina she squawks like a bird because that's what she is right she's she is the the she hold, her the hair mimic. holds all the secrets right so but because they cut all of the things that could have been perceived as offensive, now the, the parallel is very vague. You have no idea why the parallel exists like in a, in a theme reason in the movie. And yeah. all the jokes are cut, so it's not funny that she's from Africa anymore. So like, why the heck is she from Africa? Also, a side note, wh why does she have no dad? In the in the twenty twenty four, it's stupid. It's they stupid. Didn't have the, they didn't have the budget. <laughs> I guess they ran out of money. I don't know. It's stupid that that bothers me, but it really bothers me because then her mom is a single mom, which makes it like way more confusing why she does her mom so dirty as she does in the twenty twenty four version. Like it's just it doesn't make any sense for her to grow up like that. Welcome back, Lunar. Welcome back. Well, You're in the complaining part of the stream. <laughs> I think also we see her mom so much less too, which yes. then makes the like, which then makes the like comparisons in the butt of the joke of Regina's mom so much like less funny mm -hmm. because we don't see we because there is something very funny and something very meta, especially as like an adult watching Ring Girls, the original one of watching of watching Gretchen treat her mother so atrociously mm -hmm. uh but her mother liking it and understanding it and that being the dynamic that the parents had put in place to then watch katie do that same thing with her parents because that is like the thing that she realized you do as a teenager like that's the whole reason why katie then treats her parents atrociously mm -hmm. but because we see no pre-built relationship with her parents we and then uh, and then like a sour a sour relationship with uh with uh Regina and her mom it, it just hit, it hits so flat like it's it doesn't super flat. it doesn't make any sense it's like they were like oh a checklist we have to do this and yeah. they forgot the reason why yeah, and you'll see that throughout with the the couple of other cut things that we're going to talk about. This is basically the longest version of Mean Girls, and it also has the least amount of content somehow, <laughs> even though yeah. it's the longest version. Because um, there's other things that they cut too, like a favorite a favorite edgy joke line of mine is when Gretchen is spilling all of her secrets to Katie, and then she's like, you know, Regina is not going to SAT prep. She's hooking up with Aaron Samuels in the the lion costume, and um. And Katie's like, she makes him wear the costume and Gretchen goes like, no, they're both in the costume. And the thing that's so cool in the Broadway musical version, they love that joke so much that they give it these kind of like these musical moments. Like she says it and she says it like so loudly and commanding. And then it's like the music goes dun, dun, dun. And it's so funny. It makes that line hit even better than how it does in the original movie. Does that line exist? In the in the in the 2024 version, no, it doesn't. The song's there, but they just cut the line. They just cut the line, and instead, it's a visual gag of Aaron opening up the closet and seeing them together. Do we see them in the costume? And the costume is nowhere to be found in this scene. In this chain, why the, that joke was not offensive? Why is it cut? Just because it's kind of edgy. The idea of teenagers hooking up in a mascot costume—it's so dumb. Why? Why was this cut? I don't know. It it just. I think that if that, and I know it's a beloved joke, but I think if that was the thing that had been cut, fine, whatever. They didn't want to purchase a costume. They didn't want to, like, all the, all the all producing. The but it's that plus all the everything other Everything edgy. Everything. Everything. Uh, everything edgy they cut. They just decide. There is such a feel of this movie that you can feel that the writers and directors did, and Tina herself did not want to get canceled. Yep. They were, they're just like, please don't cancel us. Please don't cancel us. Please don't cancel us. Mm -hmm. And when you are all of a sudden in fear 
of your art making people upset and the backlash that your art is going to get and you're coming from that place of creation, you're going to produce something bad. Yeah. And that's what ended up happening. That's pretty much what it is. Because they cut like a whole song just because it's full of edgy jokes. Um, Stop. One of the best songs in, yeah. in, the, in the musical version. The whole song is cut. But the whole song is like edgy joke after edgy joke after edgy joke. So of course they cut it. Of course they I cut also- it. I also wanted to mention too, as you were saying, Gretchen Wieners and like that a lot of her things were cut too. Yeah. I I think that there was a lot of Gretchen cut from this movie. We, uh, I love the enhanced to Karen, but I think that we also see so much less of Gretchen and understand Mm -hmm. her so much less, Mm -hmm. especially because the musical produces so much context to her when she has a couple of her own songs that you really understand who she is and, and where she's coming from that character. We lose that. Yeah, which I thought that was one of the cool things that the musical version did is they added so much more to Gretchen's character. I love Gretchen's character the way that she's portrayed in the Broadway version. But because of the cuts they made to the the 2024 version, you have no idea all the stuff that they added to her character development. You just don't get Mm -hmm. that. It's a bummer. It's a bummer for that character. So lots of stuff cut. Lots of stuff that we're we're a little sad about. Yeah. Um, Okay. All right. Before we get into the next big thing, (laughs) Interstage Window is brought to you by Audible. Oh my gosh, what? What? Um, Yay, it worked. Okay, Stream Elements has been funny for me lately. But anyways, do you like reading? Me either, but I love books. So Audible is a really great help. You can get all the audiobooks there. Start your 30-day free trial of Audible using our link. It's audibletrial.com slash interstage window. And as we like to do, um, Landon has a book rec for us. So if you are interested in something like Mean Girls, what should they download from Audible, Landon? They absolutely should do- download the uh, story People Like Us by Donna Mele. Uh, it's, it has been a very long time since I've read this, but it is YA. Uh, however, it is uh, YA mystery intrigue uh, with mean gr- posh mean girls at a boarding school. Uh, and it is, there's a little bit of mystery, a little bit of, of trying to figure things out, but a lot of social dynamics that are at play as well. And it's a lot of fun. All right. So people like us, if you want, if you want to, a, a mean girls fix, uh, and, and it's not just re-watching the 2004 movie. There you go. You can download people like us from Audible. And it does go to support the show. You do not have to keep Audible to support the show. If you want to just no. do your 30-day free trial and use your credit that comes with that and then cancel it afterwards, you still help us out. But um, and Audible you still get is to keep a service. The book. Yes, and you still get to keep the book. Um, so there's there's no there's you don't have to keep your subscription to keep the books unlike most of the subscription services that we're used to and I'm a big fan of Audible that's what I use to read everything so everything that we talk about on this show that's a book I guarantee you I've listened to the Audible version that's how I do all of it um, so yeah love Audible it's it's a it's a fave it's a fave at my house all right shall we talk about the thesis okay okay so um, the thumbnail for this and the title. Uh, about is about being gay. So let's talk about it. Oh my gosh, Regina George is so gay in this. She's so gay. Uh, it was definitely my favorite thing when I was seeing this in theaters. I looked over to my friend and I go, "She's a lesbian, right?" <laughs> and then it was my absolute second favorite thing when uh, Karen. I think probably at that same moment that I asked uh-huh. my friend in the theater was live blogging me her reactions and went, oh, my God, they're so gay. For each other. Well, so this is basically what happens. OK, so so you have the the whole introduction to the movie and then you have the my name is Regina, Regina George, George and she comes out. Right. And the, the lighting is all like dark with a spotlight on her. And they're like really like they're showing off all the different, you know, elements of her body. But it's in like it's in like this kind of like. um feminine way if i could say yes but it is it's very female much, gazy yeah, very it female is, gazy but, it's, but, it, but it is like focusing on the boobs and the hips and the you know it oh, yeah. is like chopping up her body but in a way that like it felt different to me and then the camera cuts back to katie's face and i was like i texted landon landon why is katie in lesbians with regina that was my text okay because she is in this and the entire movie You know, the girls are fighting over Aaron in these versions, but in this version, Aaron is cardboard. So to me, it was like Regina and Katie were fighting each other and using Aaron as kind of this 
proxy war because they really just wanted to be together. That was the vibe the yes. whole movie. So y'all, I know we just complained about this movie a lot, but like this is so fanfic in this way so and fanfic. like this was the this is the thing that this movie brings that's different than the other versions that if you are a mean girls fan, there's something for you here to get out of it. Well, and I think like that's the other thing too. It's not just that Regina George is so gay, but Regina George in this movie. Uh, I was talking about her earlier how how Katie had basically put herself in the back seat and was not the protagonist. It's because Renee Rapp does such an amazing job and does such a great job of building an empathetic character. And again, I was told that this might just be me because I didn't understand. I didn't understand Regina George and the obsession with her in the original uh, because I'm a queer girl and did not play straight girl politics. Uh, but when you put a queer girl in the politics, I understand it a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> I I was like, oh, I get it. I get why Regina does what she does. I get her under character. I understand her motivations. I think that idea of like, oh, I'm going to go after Aaron not because I want fucking Aaron, but because I want to upset Katie because I have a big old lesbian crush on Katie. Uh, like, I'm like, oh, I understand that thinking 100%. Yeah, Landon uh, had to ask me and I had to be like, no, Landon, straight girls really do be like that. Like, when I say Mean Girls is a documentary, I mean it. Like, but this version is like Mean Girls for the gay girls. Yes, like, it so, so is. So, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, lesbians, that you get the worst version of Mean Girls. I really do I'm, apologize for that. But there is something here, to Renee Rapp's performance. I get, get I get Renee Rapp. I'm not, I'm yeah. not upset about it. Like, don't get me <laughs> wrong. The original was great. But well, do you see the Santa Claus gif? I'm okay. I'm, I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, oh I, think that, I, I think that, I think that, uh, it it was an interesting choice and an interesting change and Regina George being a more empathetic character. Us, I think, seeing I, I like how Renee played Regina's downfall. Uh of like you could see the cracks in it a little bit more. You can see a little bit more vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that was very interesting. And then on them, the the beautiful ness of it all is that I got to inform Karen that uh Renee did it on purpose yeah I had no idea I had no idea but apparently in interviews she has been very open about saying like this is how I see the character and this is yeah. how um I will continue to play her anytime that I'm playing her and this is how she is to me if, if you don't have an interpretation that's fine other interpretations are valid but this one is mine that's basically yeah. her stance R Renee basically came in and said I think that there is something uh, I, I think that there is something with Regina being gay that's that speaks to the character and, and makes her motivations understandable and it not being necessarily even think something she's aware of, but just something that she is doing. And then also it adds to the intrigue of it because there is something so interesting in the concept of someone like this being queer. Mm -hmm. And this this being the queer person, especially with the, you know, dynamics with Janice and then and also Damien in the original and, and the homophobia that existed there. Like, I think yeah. that there is there is something so interesting. And she basically straight up said, I play Regina as gay and uh, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And in, in this ver and this version is, of course, a lot more um, 2024 in the sense that uh, both Janice and Damien are gay in this version explicitly. Yes. Um, so so that's in there as well. Um, but when it when it comes to kind of this like this different kind of Regina George here, the there is a double edged sword here. OK, because this is the second prong of the, the two, the pincer attack that makes people say this movie is the mean girls are not mean. They're nice. OK, so it's it's Kate. Katie doesn't really have much of a reaction. Right. That's pincer number one we talked about. The the other side, pincer number two coming in, coming in from the back is also Regina George is basically the protagonist. And because yeah. Renee Rapp steals the show so much and it's really you get so much more from her perspective because things like Katie's home life being incredibly a lot of it cut out. Right. Because of that, this becomes 
more about Regina George. And because you're seeing it from Regina George's perspective, now it doesn't feel like she's so mean. So we've got this, we've got this like pincer attack coming in and basically yeah. taking mean girls into like, oh, they're not that mean in this. They are, but but you're you have a different, completely different perspective on it than you do in any of the other versions. Yeah, you have uh like obviously um the like you see the terror that this that this uh Santa Claus show does to Regina yeah. and how she interacts with it so badly. You see the uh the pressure she is under so much more. Mm -hmm. And being able to empathize with that character, I think that also speaks to our society's uh and generational troubles with being able to see villainous characters and empathetic lights and still understand that they're villainous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um well, that is they something change that it. We... Like the the Santa Claus oh, yeah. show is a really good example of how it's changed. Like in the original, the reason why they mess up the dance is because Regina comes in and says, "No, Gretchen, Katie's my best friend now. You last minute have to switch spots and so they're going to do different steps." So the whole reason why the the Santa Claus show in the original gets messed up and and they jack it up is because Regina made a stupid decision, right? Whereas in this, the reason why the Santa Claus show gets messed up is because Regina's gaining weight from the Calteen bars and the other girls can't hold her up. So it's actually directly Katie's fault instead of in the original, it's Regina's fault. So, well, also, so it's, it's, I, it's, it's a different different, um, different blame. Yeah, I was also going to say Regina's refusal to practice, but I think that like there is a, there is a much, it, it mm -hmm. is much more uh, Gretchen's fault in the original yes. and in Karen's fault. And then also... There's a much more Katie seizing an opportunity with singing yes. than Gretchen, than what happens now of like, oh, it's the social media yes. aspect of it. Well, because um, it's, it's not just Regina's refusal to practice that makes them fail, right? Like, yes, Regina refuses to practice, but where they fail is where they lift her up and she falls. Yeah. And that's not, that doesn't happen because she refused to practice. That happens because of the Cal team bars. If it had been just Regina refusing to practice, then what would have happened um, or how they would have filmed that for that to be the reason is the other girls would have all performed perfectly and she would have performed badly. And that would have been the social media thing. But that's not what happens. It's that they can't lift her up anymore mm -hmm. because yeah. she's eating the cow team bars. And and is no longer. And as they said in the movie, I think that like they hadn't done this since they were like in seventh grade. Right. And so it was like, oh, obviously your body's changed a lot in seventh uh -huh. grade. Like, <laughs> you, like we cannot lift you the same way that we did in seventh grade. But no mm -hmm. one was also willing to say that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that like that is an interesting idea too. And yeah. and it is something that I personally really like as seeing morally gray and pretty terrible protagonists. Like I love that. Being able to see a complex character uh is something that I really, really enjoy in a protagonist, but it's something that I think a lot of people, the greater population, uh cannot under like separate their own feelings towards like the morale the mor the moral feelings yeah i think it's tough i think it's tough and i, th I think this this movie has a particularly tough time with it because it's the third version it's not yes. a new story it's the third version of a story that is already beloved so yes. it's it's got it's got an uphill battle in that regard and because of other things in the movie that we've talked about unfortunately renee rap by herself cannot fully execute she needs help and she has none <laughs> god i would love to see a renee rap cast everybody as a, a, a like every performing every part of this oh i would be God. okay with that just mean, renee rap be mean renee instead of mean girls <laughs> mean renee, mean renee. I and renee is not... regina and gretchen and karen and, <laughs> and katie man it would be so funny i think that this that would be great uh personally as a renee rap stan <laughs> but it'll be hilarious no. <laughs> Uh, I truly think that overall this was, I think that the, yeah, uh, God, I love Regina George. Uh, as, and I love, you can I see, do love this As you can see it, 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 this part has a certain effect on Landon. It does. Um, that's, I'm just like sitting uh, here uh, being obje like. Objectivity uh, is out the window. <laughs> uh, just completely. Completely. Uh, listen, give me a mean girlfriend any day and I just fall apart. <laughs> So yeah, so so I think that like uh, hopefully what we've been able to share with you guys about what is kind of negative and different about this version, you can understand 
like now why so many people are saying like the mean girls aren't mean anymore and all of these things in regards to the movie because I think I think they're they're missing the for they're missing the forest for the trees right mm-hmm. and um and this is what I think is really going on with this movie and kind of what makes it so that it's not a cohesive whole package the way that the other versions are but there are interesting elements here so so you know you can kind of make a decision on that these elements appeal to you do not pay for this movie though y'all it's not good i promise you even if certain of these things that we're talking about appeal to you wait until it's free on streaming i promise you it's not worth your money um it's yes. just it's just not good um but there are there are elements here if you're a mean girls fan that you, that you can get different perspectives on some of the characters that might that might be intriguing for you yes I wish I had watched so, it on streaming is what I'm trying to say. We paid for it for the stream. And that's because yeah. you guys deserve the best. That's right. And <laughs> we, I didn't want to watch any other musical other than this right now. <laughs> right, right. True. <laughs> All right. Let's ask that final question. Okay. Did it resonate, Karen? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I tell, I'll tell you... I'll tell you what I, I gave in a, a quick, I gave Jane a quick little spoiler review, right? Because she wanted oh, to know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was just one line. And I said, this movie would have been good if the other versions didn't already exist. And that is ultimately how I feel. If if this had been the first and only version of Mean Girls I had seen, yes, I would say it absolutely resonates. But because I had those other versions because I had seen the original movie so many times because I actually went to Broadway and saw it and because I watched the slime tutorial on YouTube with um, even a different cast of the Broadway like no it doesn't but it's not because it's directly this movie's fault it's because it is standing on the shoulders of giants and it just doesn't measure up so that's that's my answer for resonating um what about you Landon does this movie resonate with you I think that it's a that's actually this is probably one of the toughest times I've had to answer this question um I think it does I think it gave me interesting insight into the the like a new look onto the dynamics that are at play here uh it gave me Renee Rapp it gave me a a queer positive story story of this like something like the 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 homophobia is a little bit hard to watch in the original i'm not gonna lie as a queer girl watching damien be made fun of janice get made fun of like that's tough uh and so being able to have that here is a lot of fun it's something i really like uh i am not a huge fan of the musical so the songs that are in this songs i i think are a bop are, are some of my favorites so they're good uh, especially when they're sung by renee matt uh However, I would not pay for it <laughs> again. <laughs> like it resonates to about two ninety nine worth of money. Uh, in my, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm giving it a hard no, and you're giving it like a soft no. Yes, yeah. uh, I'm giving it. I'm giving it a light no. I'm giving it a. I might need to be drunk to enjoy this again. <laughs> uh some, or you need, really need some um some uh some influence right yeah i i watch it for the hot blonde like <laughs> let's be honest uh oh the hot God. blonde and the art freak are the reasons why i'm watching it yeah now, um, there, there are a couple other positive things about this that we did not mention for example the choreography is incredibly kinetic so good um so if you really like I also to think... see dancers really pushing themselves that's that's something you might want to watch this for as well I also think uh, vocally, everyone but Katie did a fantastic job. True. Uh, uh, Janice is fantastic. I, I think that she certainly the the actress had was standing on the shoulders for for uh, of giants, especially for um, her big moment, mm-hmm. her big song, and she she holds up to it. She does yeah. a really good job. There's I know some that criticism we didn't mention of her talk about her mouth. But. Yeah, there's some uh, just this, this. These are like cliff notes, you guys. We're gonna give you all some cliff notes. Um, Janice, there's comes some criticism of her character because she's like uh, she's an art kid, right? So that what that meant in 2004 was she was the goth kid, and she's not goth in this, but that's because there are no goths in 2024. Y'all, people saying that just aren't paying attention. They've apparently they don't they've never they don't see high schoolers. They have no idea what kids look like anymore. Um, that it's silly. Janice is great in this. Um, Janice is there's fantastic. nothing wrong with her with with her not being goth anymore. Goths don't exist anymore so uh and even though the and even though the um fashion or like the the costuming was cheap the fashion wasn't i thought yeah. the fashion very much stood for 2024 um can i also say one thing that the, just peeves me about all remakes and something that i'm like going to like need to write an essay on at some point if you are remaking something that is beloved 
when you put in and keep a line for real, that actor needs to say it exactly the same as it was said previously. I hate, I hate these remakes that have like just decided to change lines. Uh, the you go get Glenn Coco needed to be exactly the same. The get in bitch we're going shopping needed to be exactly the same and they weren't. And it makes me so angry that iconic cultural lines are changed during remakes. I know that is such a small little pet peeve, but there are <laughs> enough people quoting it that I'm sorry, as an actor, you need to give up your integrity and say the exact same thing because people are just going to be mad if you don't. It's that's kind of true. Like if it's if it's such a quotable line that everyone still says it all the time, like you should just mimic it. You should just do a mimic version. Just mimic it. Yeah. It does not matter. It you do not need to put your own stamp on it. You're not going to say it better than the original. Do the ori- do what everybody is hoping you'll do and do the original. I mean, you're not wrong. It's been long enough that people would have liked to hear the original version of, you know, you go Glen Coco, but that's not what happens. No, or or get in, bitch. We're going shopping. Like the yeah. fact she the fact she didn't say it exactly like that. It was like Renee, you did me dirty. <laughs> I mean, it would have been better if she had. So yeah, yeah, that's our that's our opinion on Mean Girls twenty twenty four. Um, there were good parts of it, but ultimately, see it for free. Don't uh, don't waste your money. And there are some good things to get out of it if you're a Mean Girls fan. Also, if you're not in general a Mean Girls fan, don't don't spend your time even, um, you know, because just watch the original because yes. uh, it's so much better. Yes. All right. So where can you find us? You can find me right here. We stream um, most almost every Saturday and Sunday from noon to um, to two Eastern. This weekend right now is my kind of Valentine's Day weekend. So after this, we're going to play some Dream Daddies. We're also going to play that um, tomorrow. But in general, my main game right now is 10-2. So I am, when I'm not doing podcast episodes, I am a Final Fantasy completionist streamer. And so we're going through 10-2. We're doing our third run of the game where we're doing our Fiend Tales right now. Um, but our next podcast episode is very exciting, as you can see here. If you if if you know, you know it's New Moon. Okay, we did the first Twilight book. We're gonna do the second Twilight book in March. Um, I have some takes. I'll let I you know. Wait to share them. Karen has some spicy ass I have takes. Some takes. You know what? I had some. I had some kind of out there crazy takes of original. Apparently, a, a, an adult me reading Twilight just I can't help myself. Um, I just have the craziest thoughts. Um, just- in addition to that wild. one, yeah, wild. So come back in March for that. In addition, um, we do have a, a, a monthly community day that we do, Sunhaven. That is actually next weekend, next Saturday. Come join us for some Sunhaven. It's Stardew Valley, but better, you guys. It's I know so that sounds better. like sacrilegious, but it's true. I've played so, I've played so much Sunhaven. Yeah. So much. Yeah, since the first one, right? <laughs> so much Sunhaven since the first one because it's so good. Yes. Uh, 100%. It's excellent. And all of my stuff um, is posted to YouTube. So basically all of my games that I've done, there's there's Let's Play versions of them over on YouTube that are this, the stream recordings. Um, so you can go follow me over there if you want to see any of the old stuff. Like if you want to go check out our Twilight Talk, you can go check that out on my YouTube. Um, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me at Land in Maine on uh, both. I was about to say Twitter on both uh, Instagram and TikTok, not the RIP site. Um, <laughs> definitely can find me either in those places. I post fun little poetry and I post some photos about what's going on in my life. Uh, I sometimes post reviews on books that I that I like and um, or don't like. <laughs> and uh, also, I have a book out that you could buy. That would be great. Yes, the um, the thing stream elements is it, it loaded mine, but it won't load hers. But anyway, if you scroll down to the about here okay. on Twitch, you will see a link to Landon's poetry book. She's released a couple, and if you're interested in poetry, um, I would encourage you to check those out. Uh, give those give those a purchase. Please and thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna switch back to our cameras. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. This was fun to talk about Mean Girls. And um, and yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite movies ever. And uh, and now that I've talked about this, I feel like I need to cleanse myself with watching the original again. So I'm, I, might, I might do that later. 
But for right now, I'm actually going to take a little stretch break and we're going to say goodbye to Landon. So Landon, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about Mean Girls. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to see you next Saturday and I'm excited to talk about New Moon. Yes, for sure. All right. Everybody say goodbye to Landon. Bye, Landon. Bye. Thank you so much for the applause. Thank you so much for the applause. We have week now. We really appreciate that. Um, she, uh, she depends on your applause. Okay. I am Tinkerbell. Yes. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm going to put y'all in the BRB screen for just a little bit. Um, for the recording, we are going to go ahead and pause that. So if you're watching the recording on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Um, and of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. <laughs>